I'm Andrew, and this is Fast Mapping, my presentation on Fast Mapping, which is a theoretical mental process by which many linguists believe that a child or an animal assigns meaning to new vocabulary based on limited exposure to the word. This means, for example, that a child can decipher a rough definition for a word such as ball without actually being told what a ball is. In other words, a child will construct meaning for a word based on its context, much like our brains will construct the Kanisha triangle, even though it really isn't there. It is important to note that this construction of meaning, like the triangle, is a phenomenon that is occurring within the brain. It is not a part of the sensory input. This means that the human brain is naturally wired to acquire languages from birth. And that, of course, is important because fast mapping helps to prove that eye language is a valid theory and show that language acquisition is more than just through extensional means. But their occasional mistakes are telling. It's almost always when the grammar is irregular. Laura, if I had one mouse and I had another mouse, I'd have two what? Two what? Two, two mouses. Two mouses? There's another word for, for, for that plural for mouse, isn't it? What is it? Do you remember? Mm. It'd be two. Ma. Mice. Two mice. That's right. Very good. Good job. Myra created the word mouses herself by just adding an S. It's impossible for her to have imitated the word from an adult because they never use it. Instead, she applied the logical rule for making a plural and has to be taught the exception. As the video explains, the child's language acquisition must be through more than just extensional means or through the environment. So this is good because fast mapping proves that there must be processes in the brain that help to drive language acquisition in all individuals, and this is probably done through an organ located in the brain. To prove that language acquisition does indeed occur in the brain, linguists Kaminsky, Call, and Fischer Fisher conducted the experiment Word Learning in a Domestic Dog, Evidence for Fast Mapping. They did this by proving that a Border Collie, Rico, can learn new words with fast mapping. And this was done through exclusion learning, or assigning a label or meaning to an unknown object in a group of known objects based on the fact that it is unknown. And this is a fast map technique. Because the brain is constructing meaning for an object or a word without being given its actual definition. For example, if you were to ask any ordinary person which one of these objects out of the lists is a blog blog, they might answer that it is the weird squiggly shape because we already know that this is a square and that this is a triangle. And that is exclusion learning and fast mapping because I never explained exactly what a blog blog is. In the study, it was found that Rico can match nouns specifically to 200 different objects which were toys that she would retrieve from different rooms. In the study, they used four different sets of ten objects, and the dog was able to identify 37 out of the 40 objects total in the study. By placing an unknown or novel item among seven known objects in a new experiment, Rico was able to successfully match the unknown label given at the beginning of the new experiments to the unknown object seven out of ten times, which meant that she was able to fast map and learn a new label for an object more than half the time. Furthermore, 
<clears throat> it was found later that when she was tested for her attention, that she recognized these fast mapped objects labels over half the time, which is consistent with the learning abilities of young children around the age of three. However, the study came under scrutiny because of con confounding factors such as eye and body language cues between humans and dogs, and the fact that the dog was always asked to retrieve the new item first in the experiments. It was also argued that the dog's responses were only conditioning as well, and that it could not understand the separate words within the phrases. So the difference between a dog fast mapping a label for an object and a baby fast, not a baby, but a, a young child fast mapping to find significance for a single word is that human children, of course, develop the ability to use this information productively and also eventually understand language such as abstract features like nouns, adverbs, and adjectives more than a dog ever could. And this is probably why the RICO experiment was scrutinized. Because can a dog really understand all of these things and what equivalence classes are? Probably not. But the more important thing to note is that this study suggests that our, pro our language acquisition processes are most likely evolved from simpler building blocks within the brain over time. This is great because, because it helps to prove that an language perspective must work and that acquisition is not all extensional. More recently, a new study was performed by Piley and Reed called Border Collie Comprehends Object Names as Verbal Reference, and this was done with a Border Collie named Chaser that was actually able to distinguish proper names for over 1,000 different toys that the master had trained the dog to learn. And in the study it was found that the dog could differentiate between nouns and verbs in the study by being told to either paw, nose, or get different objects and could match the correct action with each verb and the correct noun with each object. Secondly, by being taught that some proper noun objects were general items such as frisbees and other balls, the dog is, under, is able to categorize objects with improper names, nouns. And furthermore, that means that the dog can understand multiple meanings for a singular object. For example, the dog can understand that Blug Blug is a ball and also a toy that she can play with and is allowed to touch, which seems pretty amazing for a dog. And also, finally, this shows that um, exclu exclusion learning and therefore fast mapping are mechanisms in the brain to guide learning abilities. Due to the fact that the study was done with a dog, this also shows that human language acquisition mechanisms are evolved from simpler building blocks within the brain. And I had a video that the experimenter Piley had made linked in the video, but it doesn't show up because it doesn't allow embedding. So rather than have a copyright infringement, I am putting the links in the description and in the email so that you can watch them later because they're pretty interesting. What does this mean? Since rehearsal was necessary for the dogs, that may have confounded the retention rates of them, which were also said in an independent study, as I mentioned earlier, to have matched the level of three-year-old human children. I found that this is relevant because rehearsal is also necessary in human children for retention rates.
to be decent. As I said earlier, simple, simpler cognitive building blocks that are present in other animals and therefore within brains in general may help to moderate our language cognition by helping to build our language acquisition devices. And since the dog cannot possibly understand what equivalence classes are, but the study suggests our understanding of them comes from simpler mechanisms found in other animals such as the dog. Therefore, we would seem to need to be able to acquire language naturally before being able to create it, which suggests that our brains develop the ability to learn language prior to our actual use of language. And this all supports iLanguage because it proves that language is learned from more than just the outside world and being instructed. My first question was, does the study show that dogs can understand different aspects of language, or is it operant conditioning? I chose to ask, ask this question because I wasn't quite sure on the answer. To me, it seemed like the dog's responses could just be operant conditioning, and that it really didn't understand the words, per se. But at the same time, I do believe that... Um, it, it does mean that our ability to understand words may come from more simpler cognitive abilities such as just distinction or operant conditioning. And my second question was, how could this study be furthered to prove Chaser's ability to distinguish between different types of words such as verbs, nouns, adjectives, etc.? and I thought it would be interesting to incorporate experiments to perhaps find out if the dog could understand qualities of objects such as adjectives like say fuzzy or warm or um, likewise adjectives such as slowly like run slowly or run fast and doing this could help us further explore the language acqui acquisition device and perhaps see how all of these phenomenon developed within language in the first place.